Hello, fiery tubers, and welcome to another Let's Play with me, Blue Ankylo. Long ago, when the gods were closer to men, a great hero fought to save mankind with divine aid. In his possession was a sword of light. To pierce the darkness. And a sacred emblem of burning light. Born of flames. They call it the Fire Emblem. An emblem that surpasses time and space. This is a story of the fabled Fire Emblem. Well, you knew this was going to happen eventually, everyone. So, we're playing The Binding Blade. Now, this is technically the first Fire Emblem released on the Game Boy Advance, but only in Japan. So we're playing a translation, uh, which seems to be pretty good to me, as I've done a little bit of uh, double-checking. So, um, the English translation seems to work. And, uh, I'm hoping to share my experiences with it with you. So, the last Fire Emblem game we played on this, on the channel was technically this game's sequel, but it was the first, like, English North American release Fire Emblem game ever. Um, I believe it was number seven, and this is number six, technically. So this is the Binding Blade, and I think the one we played last time was... The, uh, the actual official title is Blazing Sword or something like that. The one with um, Elwood and uh, Lynn and Hector and all that. You guys remember, hopefully. I assume probably the same people will come check this video out. So anyway, I'm not really super familiar with this game because, uh, well, it never really came out on the Game Boy Advance. I had to, you know, get a translation for it at later after the fact. And uh, I think from what I've looked at, it should play very similar to the other Game Boy Advance Fire Emblems. Specifically the one we just played. Because this one's actually from a little bit further back in time, we might be missing a couple um, features or, or mechanics, but overall it should be very similar to the last one. And it will basically finish the story, which we kind of left off on a weird note at the end of the last one. At the end, the end of uh, the last Fire Emblem game we played, which is technically a prequel, um, you know, Ellie Wood and everyone had retired and everything. We'd saved the world, theoretically. But we knew some bad stuff was happening in uh, one of the neighboring countries, and uh, I expect that will be the main part of the plot for today's, uh, or for, for this series. So without further ado, let's get started. In case you're wondering, you can get a, a basic look at all the various uh, classes there, just, you know, in case. So I've played, like, the first few chapters just to get a bit of a feel for the game, make sure it's uh, gonna work, but... Like I said, for the most part, I'll be playing this blind. I'll probably be checking in with a walkthrough here and there, because I don't want to miss too many characters. Unlike the last Fire Emblem game that I let's play, where I sort of knew the basic things I needed to do to recruit everybody and all that. This time, I'm pretty much in the blind, and uh, it would be a shame if we missed all the cool stuff. So I'll be checking a couple hints every now and then. Uh, so let's get started. Like I said, I got to chapter six. That's really, like, barely past the tutorial, honestly. Dawn of Destiny. Man and dragon once coexisted in harmony. However, man shattered that harmony with a sudden onslaught. A great war, now known as the Scouring, was fought for dominion of the land. Losses were tremendous on both sides, and in this war, the very laws of nature itself were twisted and distorted, bringing chaos and unease. Defeated and humbled, the dragons disappeared from the realm. Mankind then began to rebuild and repopulate their newly won land. A millennium has passed. Let's say hello to Eli again. Alright, so pretend, like, the story for this game will sort of be presented as though you didn't play the prequel that came after it, but all of that is history for this game. So, uh, you know, some of this should be quite familiar. I'll have to turn the uh, text speed up when I get the chance. The scroll speed. I don't think 
think we spent much time in Etruria in the last game, although we had some characters that came from there. Burns, the one with all the wyvern riders, I think. The two most powerful nations, there you go. Hey, the Lycian League! This is where, like, our hometown is, right? The Marquis. Ilias, the Pegasus Knight area. And the, uh, the Nomads. Certainly met a few of them. Oh, sure, it was all peaceful for a thousand years. Except for, like, what would it have been? Like, 15 years ago when we had that big fight? <laughs> Don't worry about that. Oh, that King Zephiel again, hey? Well, we should have known that Burn was going to be the, the main problem for this, this part of the game, right? That's not good at all. Hey, you guys remember Foray? And Roy, you may see on the side of the screen as well. Everyone knows him from Smash, but this is the game where he actually made his debut. He's just in training. Man, we're getting old. Uh, poor old Elliewood. I think it's supposed to be like 15 years after the last game. Maybe 20, I don't know, I forget exactly. Oh man, even Hector. I mean, he's got a mighty beard, but he's looking pretty old. He was the star of the last game, clearly. Oh, and he's got a daughter as well, of course. Now, technically, all of the pairings and stuff I made for marriages and children in uh, at the end of the last game, they're not, like, explicitly canonical, but it's pretty close. I don't think Lynn is actually in this game at all. Uh, she was kind of sort of retconned in on the, uh, the prequel. Boars. Right. Alright. Got lots of name dumps, lots of name drops. A lot of info dump, I guess is the word. Let's see how Roy does. So there's already some axe guys. Yeah. Maybe a little bit inbred. Come on, that's rude. Just because he's getting old. Okay, well we can skip some text to save some time. Ah, uh, yeah, they're all... So these are just, like... Typical mercenary, or not even mercenary, just bandits, out to take advantage of the armies being at war. Classic Fire Emblem. Kill everyone, man. All right, well that's pretty classy. Man, destroy that village already. Quick, grab your magic sword! Oh hey, you guys remember Merlinus. 
in the last game, we kind of saw him start his career. Now he's old. <laughs> yeah, Hector would probably be pretty upset if his daughter was harmed. Just knowing what we know about Hector. These dastards! Alright. Gonna save the old man. There's our party. Good old blue. Oh, it's Lance! I bet you he uses spears or lances. Ha ha ha! Alright, we got bandits. So we got the green and red knights right at the beginning of the game, as is the way of Fire Emblem. Ostia tends to use the, uh... Well, I guess technically the green and red cavaliers. The knight is the armored guy. If I remember the classes correctly. But yeah, Ostia is generally all about the armored dudes. Oh, it'll be fine. Let's go take the castle. There you go. Oh look, and here's our old man who's probably pre-promoted and terrible. <laughs> it's uh, a bit of a theme for these games. Two arms then. Alright, so. We do start with Marcus. I think he was old in the last game, now he's even older. Uh, he's lost all his levels. I don't know if he's salvageable. But usually you don't want to use these guys too much because they sort of suck the XP out of the, the rest of the team. We've got Walt. We've got a probably lousy archer. We'll see. We've got Alan, Red Knight, Red Cavalier. We've got Lance, Green Cavalier. Oddly enough, he starts with a sword and Alan starts with both. Yeah. How come Lance doesn't have a Lance? Anyway, we've also got Boars. He's our... Uh, more classic knight. And Roy! Has his father's rapier. And uh, pretty bad stats to start with, um, honestly, but anyway, we should be okay. So let me get the, the feel for the game again. You want to be a little bit careful how you move up. I think even the early enemies are maybe a little bit stronger than they were in the in the prequel that we just, or, you know, the game we played last time. Uh, one thing we might want to do is move over either the silver, well, what does the Silver Lance require? Oh, okay, yeah. The Silver Lance requires an A skill. So I can't really give that to the other uh, Cavaliers. Um, I could give the Iron Sword to somebody if I wanted, though, if, if uh, nobody had one. Oh, I could give that to uh, Roy, and that way he won't have to waste his rapier too much. I might do that. But we're a little bit short on weapons. Alright, so... Yeah, we're gonna do that. So... Boris is kind of our tank to some degree, pretty good defense, but he's kind of weak. If you if you don't know the Fire Emblem stuff, you know, just a quick recap. Axe beats uh, Lance, Lance beats Sword, Sword beats Axe, so there's a bit of a weapon triangle there. So you generally want to have someone ready to fight these guys that uses swords. Now I could be aggressive here. I don't really have any healers or anything. Maybe I should play the defensive route. Let them come to us. On the other hand, you have to be fairly quick usually to get to, to actually save all the villages, right? Like probably this guy's gonna move down to destroy the village or something. You also get a defense bonus in forests, certain terrain. So it's like minus one damage and 20% chance to avoid in the forest there. I mean, uh, do you think could kill this guy? I just want to see what kind of numbers we're looking at. It's like 8 damage. Oh, I should turn it back to expert. Right, right. There's a couple uh, settings we should do early on. I like... Well, first, we'll make things move a little bit quicker. And 
And uh, I do like the detailed versions, just, just my own preference. Probably won't need help. Music's good, sounds good. I like blue. We'll stick with blue. And uh, we'll leave animations on normal for now. We'll see. I know you can, uh, like later on once we got healers, we'll try to turn it off for the healers. Because it gets a little bit repetitive. Um, Alright, so do we try... So now you can see I have to do the math myself. 10 minus 2. Uh, with 81% chance to hit, how much damage can you do? Uh, let's see. Attack speed is not high enough to get a double. We'll do about... 11 damage? So 8 plus 11 is not a kill. We would pretty much have to use Marcus. And he will just slaughter these guys on his own, which is not what we want. Um, Alright. I'm just worried that we're level 1. Okay, we, we should just play the game, you know, right? I guess we could... Um, Javelin toss this guy. Javelin's pretty low chance to hit, though. Okay, what I'm gonna do... First thing... We're gonna trade... With Elliewood, or sorry, Roy, I'm gonna call him Elliewood for a while. And I give him the Iron Sword. You can also do rescues and stuff where you carry other units around based on constitution and aid. We'll get around to that. Which knight has the best defense, you think? Six? Six? About the same. Five's really low. Well. Alright, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head out in the forest here for a minute. We should be fine. They'll probably attack either Boars or Marcus. And then we'll kill him. Actually, he can only attack the one. Perfect. Alright, we'll just end the turn. Let's get going. Already wasted enough time getting started here. Alright, so we got two going that way, one going this way. Awesome. Totally just dodged it. Got our counter in. A little bit of XP, you know the drill for these sorts of games. It doesn't look like they're going after the village, so this is, I think, probably the right choice then. Okay, so I would like to kind of feed uh, Roy some kills early on if possible. Um, that will do just enough damage to kill it. The Iron Sword would also do enough damage. So what's the advantage with the Rapier here? Just uh, a little bit higher chance to hit and some crit. But it's kind of a rare weapon in a sense, you can't just buy them generally. So you're kind of better off using the Iron Sword if you don't need the, the better weapon. Get stabbed, yo. Alright. So we start with Roy. So, boars can only get this far. We could also go with javelins. I don't like to, sp to to spam javelins too much. They're uh, kind of expensive, and they're not even very good at hitting. Well, especially against axes, they're kind of weak. Um, let's weaken them up a little bit with the iron bow if we hit. No counters to ranged attacks, of course. And uh, I don't think we'll be one-shotting him here. Unless, uh, Lance is considerably better. Actually, he would get a double hit. Okay, so we're gonna go with Lance here, or, uh, Lance. Again, the names of some of these characters might be a little different, depending on the translation you're playing, but, uh, you know, I'm sure we'll figure it out. So, uh, this should work. You get to see the enemies get a counterattack. Of course, didn't do them any good. If there's anything uh, about the game you'd like me to explain, uh, this first episode's a good time to ask some questions. I assume, you know, most of you have watched other Fire Emblem games, but I'm, I'm willing to, to give a little bit more tutorial here and there. I don't think we'll be able to kill this one. So the danger is... If I moved, um, Alan up to attack him, he'd get potentially hit one counterattack here for six damage. And then next turn, this guy could attack again, and then kill him on the counter. And then the archer could attack him, and this bandit could attack him. So he could be hit, like, two, 
three, like four times next in, in a round. That'd probably be enough to kill him. So you generally don't want to do stuff like that. Uh, whereas if we hold fast... Um, we can basically block the weakling archer, or even just pick him up if you wanted. Make sure we've got the iron sword equipped. Uh, I wonder... So there is another kind of trick you can do. Uh, and this is, uh, advanced level strats. If you give your Marcus-type characters, the ones that have really high, um, physical defense, they're pre-promoted, we don't want him stealing kills. So if we leave him with no weapons at all, we can use him to block roads, roads, roads up like this. The enemies can barely do any damage to him because he's so strong. And uh, that way my weaker units don't get hit at all. So that's a, a classic Fire Emblem technique for really strong units early game. And then this lets the rest of the team, like I could just hold out for there for ages. And I could technically use ranged attacks probably, but we'll probably just move him out of the way. All right, so we could get Alan up there. I assume their archer isn't that strong. Looking at like 10 base damage minus your defense. That's pretty weak. Uh, all right, I'm gonna move Marcus out of the way. I just want to see if we can do enough damage in one hit here. No. Boars is not particularly good against axe guys. This should work. We might take some damage, but uh, hopefully we dodge. So far, Lance has been on a roll. Alright. Now... I was kind of hoping that I'd have a way of killing this guy and then allowing boars to attack the archer. But I don't think that's going to happen unless we got that 2% critical, basically. So, what's Boar's chance of hitting this guy? 62% isn't great. Won't take much damage on the counter, though, so it's not a big deal. Kinda didn't put Roy in the right spot. This would be 9 damage, almost for sure. We take a lot more in counter. Okay, so what I'd rather do is if someone takes a counter-attack, I'd rather it was Boars. There's very little chance they'll be able to kill him. Alright, well... I guess what I'll do is I'll send, uh, Alan over to the village. I expect most of these houses will just be tutorial stuff. Get money, yo! Weapons break! <laughs> And, uh, yeah, we'll just visit the town next time. Ca uh, horse units, mounted units, kind of have the advantage of being able to visit and continue moving. That's cool. Alright, so if the archer wants to attack uh, Roy, that's fine. Just try to keep him from getting double hit. Alright. So, unfortunately, Boar's missed one attack, so he's not getting the finisher. The enemy will often focus on your lord, uh, because they know you lose if he dies. Alright, so... How do we deal with this? Get up to here... About 9 damage... I was gonna visit this, this village, but uh, maybe first off we should do this. It's 10 damage... Wait, wasn't Roy only like 9? Shoot, that's only 8 damage. That's not enough to kill him. Man, these early units are so weak. Alright. Boars, I'd like you to at least try to get the kill. Come on, buddy. Dang it! Boars! 2 for 3 at 62%. Or 1 for 3 at 62%. Oh, we're getting kind of wrecked here. 
I was kind of counting on, uh, yeah, I can't even kill him with lance. Alright, well, uh... We basically need a crit or something here? No. Well, we should be okay. We're gonna take a little bit of damage here. I don't think I've got a way of... I'm not even sure if Walt can kill this guy, honestly. That won't do it. So I guess we'll just have you run around to help out with Roy. Let's see. Yeah, that's no better at all. So there's almost no way to kill this bandit. I was really not expecting Boris to miss two out of row. Two out of three. Alright, well... Sometimes the enemy likes to attack people with no weapons because they know they don't get a counter. You get a double attack, but it's only going to do seven times two. I actually can't leave Roy here, because then both bandits and the uh, archer could hit him. How much damage does this guy do? Like seven? I actually can't put Roy here either. I mean, it's only a 36% chance to hit, but that's enough that if Roy gets hit here, and then on the next turn the, the bandit attacks him, he'll die. Well, isn't that great? Alright, well, we're gonna switch around here and Vulnerary up. Don't be afraid to use your Vulneraries. Come on, Boars. Finally. Alright. Yeah, that took a little bit longer than I was hoping. But we got him. Good. Now, Alan, you just gotta do a little bit of dancing around. This should be fine. Yeah, I don't know what this archer is thinking. So if you attack with a ranged attack on a ranged unit, uh, they will get a counter. Uh, assuming they don't die. Now, like I was saying, I really do want to feed uh, Roy some kills if I can. Because he does start really weak. He's got to get that level up. Fine. You can also kind of pinch in uh, ranged units like archers. So um, if we surround him with melee units so that he can't move, like this, um, even if he survives this attack, he won't be able to move and he won't be able to attack at range at melee range. So. Now that it's generally a huge deal this early in the game, you know, good to know. Let's have uh, Marcus visit this town. We didn't actually visit this town, this building. Use your terrain! <laughs> Thanks, dude. Alright, what do we get? Usually you get items for this, but we'll see. Sometimes you have to spend, send a specific character to these villages as well. Hey, some money! Alright, and now the village is closed off, so bandits would not be able to destroy it. So are these supposed to be burn soldiers? Alright, well let's get ready. Uh, how far can these guys move? Oh yeah, just, just, I actually just guessed the right spot stuff. I think Boars is going to need to heal up a little bit. One, eventually we'll get a Cleric or something, probably before too long, and that'll uh, preserve our items a lot more. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to end the episode, and uh, we've, we've basically done a little bit of a starting battle. Um, we'll finish off Chapter 1 next episode, I believe. We'll deal with Damas, who's the boss here. Level 5 fighter, surrounded by his level 1 fighters, but uh, it should be okay. So thanks for watching everyone, hope you've enjoyed, hope you're excited for the series, and I will see you next time for more 
uh, Fire Emblem The Binding Light. 